Recently, I got a good deal on a broken Coco 3 from eBay, and I thought it would be fun attempting a repair while recording it. See how I went from this to this. Okay, so I recently received this Coco 3 that I bought off of eBay. It's in good condition. The case is solid. I don't really see any scratches. Uh, nothing's broken on it. It's just very, very yellow. The Coco 3 itself does not turn on. Uh, the description says that um, there is something on the RF out. So I want to go ahead and test that now. And I wanted to take advantage and maybe sort of try and fix this on video and see if that's going to be fun or not. Um, so right now uh, I have the composite out hooked up to the TV and the RF out. And the TV is currently in composite mode. So let's see if anything comes out. There is nothing on the screen whatsoever. Let's go and switch to the TV tuner. Okay. All right. So let's see. Okay. That's something. That's probably just noise generated by the RF can. Now, you may not have heard it. Uh, but when I turned it on, there was like um, a vibrating sound for a little bit. Maybe it'll come out in the video. Okay, so that's an indication to, Leah, to me at least that the relay is turning on and then turning off really fast. So it's kind of like it's bouncing. Okay, um, so yeah, let's open it up and see how things look like on the inside. I've gone ahead and removed the screws, so this should come right off. Did I forget one? No, oh, okay. All right, and let's take a look inside. Not too bad. Uh, it's a little dusty, like most of these things are. Okay. Uh, it's got, it looks like it has a standard 128K. All right, uh, very clean. Can't really say anything about that. And um, uh, let's start troubleshooting, I guess. You know, where should I start? Well, I'd like to measure some voltages. And uh, what gimme is that? That's well, an 86 gimme. So maybe I can get this in view here. Maybe not, huh? Yeah, that's good enough. All right, set to DC. Let's turn it on. Okay, so pin three of the salt chip should have five volts on it. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. And one, two, three. And it has 4.38 volts. I mean, it's kind of low, uh, but I guess that should be enough to power it. Hmm. So, it's getting warm. I think this pin over here should also have the 5 volts, 4.45, 8.51. Five point sixteen. So so far, it looks um, like it's got enough voltage, I guess, to do something, but not quite five volts. Um, well, let's dig a little deeper. So I guess the first thing I want to do, just for the sake of sanity, is pull the gimme out, which is the one chip you really can't replace on this thing, and put it into a known working board and make sure it works. So I will carefully pull this out now. I guess that's the first time that guy's pulled out. Because it was really in there. 
and bend the pins. Looks good. Okay, let's set that aside. And this is the board that I've been working on that I put together. And I know it works because I was just using it. Let's see. Let's pop this guy in. Okay. All right. Now, let's see if this works. Let's see if it turns on. All right, that is a very good sign because if the gimme chip works, and it looks like it does, I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't have other issues, but um, everything else is salvageable. You know, we can, if we had to, make a new board. We don't, probably don't need to because the board does look pretty good. And I suspect it's an issue with the power side of the board. But yeah, it looks like it's turning on. Let's see if it, oh just because I like doing this. Yay, there's sound. All right, that is a good sign. Gimme chip is good. Now let's keep troubleshooting the board. Now that we're here, let's get some voltages and compare the voltages on this board to the voltages we're seeing on the other board. Okay, the cocoa is on. <clears throat> so on pin three of the salt chip, we should see something like three, I'm sorry, five volts. And we do, 4.95. Okay. I think over here, like, maybe 12 volts or something. Yeah, positive 12 volts. Thereabouts. Doesn't have to be exactly that. And then over here, it's minus 12 or minus 13 or something. I'm sorry, wrong end. There we go, minus 12.69 volts. All right. And that's DC. Now... AC on the transformer, even if it's off, should be like minus, I'm sorry, nine, you know, 10 volts DC, and that's more or less what we're seeing on one half of the transformer. It's a center tapped transformer. And then the other one is, um, yeah, minus 10 volts, more or less, and the center one is ground, of course, that's the reference. And, you know, this is more or less what we should see on the other one. So let's take a look at the other board. Right. So first, let's take a look at the transformer output. It doesn't need to be on for that. And we're getting, you know, about 10 volts AC on this side. And we're getting about 10 volts AC on this side. That looks good. Okay. Now, Turn on the cocoa, and let's see what we get in terms of DC. All right, maybe you can see that. Yeah. Again, uh, about five volts on pin three. Four point four seven seems a little low to me. Um, we should get around twelve volts on this side, and we're not. And we should get minus thirteen volts on this side. We're getting minus nothing practically zero. oh sorry wrong side so minus 12 volts on this side minus two. so that looks about right um you know everything's pointing to either the salt chip or uh this transistor here um my gut tells me that it's the salt chip that's not regulating correctly and you know i'll confirm that's the case but before pulling it, or at least try to confirm it. But yeah, my gut's telling me it's a salt chip. So let's see what's up with that. Usually these caps are pretty good on these cocoa boards, but look at this guy. It's a big input cap. <clears throat> uh, it's bulging. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, this cruddy stuff under there. That's, that's hot glue. But, you know, it may be hard to see in the video, but, you know, I'm going to go down the side of it and then it just bulges out. That's a huge bulge. So that cap needs to be replaced. It is not good. Let's see if we can see the other side here. 
it's not bulging at all on the other side you know so you know you can see the difference you know this is this is in bad shape so we're gonna have to replace that before anything maybe the salt chip is good all right I've removed the board and let's get a better look at this cap that cap is in bad shape it is bulging it is leaking and it doesn't look good even on this side I looked around and I don't have a new one of these but just for the sake of getting it working I'll take it from a donor board I have a Coco 2 donor board here with the same cap which is actually loose on this board this is from a well, I bought this on eBay it's a completely destroyed board so at least we'll get some parts out of it so the first thing I'm going to do is add some solder to it this helps because you can replace the old solder with this newer stuff and you know some people say that's not a good idea I disagree it's helped me a lot and then we're just going to just hold the cap on the other side heat up on the legs and it's kind of like that came right off Oof, look at that. Let's take another look at this cap. Ugh, disgusting. Obviously, something happened here. What did they do, leave this cocoa on for 20 years? I don't know, or they left it plugged in for 20 years? Uh, wow, that is bad. Well, let's clean up the board a little bit and put in the cap. So, we are gonna work here. As you can see, again, that is pretty bad. Let's try and clean it up a little bit. All right, and so that is here. Let's add a little flux just because it helps to suck up the solder that we already added. And let's see how much we can clean up with this. This is hard to do on film. On <laughs> film, Jesus, while recording. And I think that went all the way through. It did. Okay. This side over here is pretty cruddy. Let's just scrape some of this off. Not all of it, but just enough to get the new cap, or rather the other cap on. I guess this is dried up gunk from when the capacitor exploded. This over here is definitely hot glue. I can get some of that off, I guess. I don't want to scratch up the board too much. See, I just scratched it a little bit there. Okay. Ugh. All right. I got a brush somewhere and some alcohol. Some alcohol, some isopropyl, just the stuff you get at CVS or whatever. And we don't need too much. I just want to kind of wet. <laughs> That's a whole lot of alcohol. <laughs> just want to wet the brush enough to, you know, make it a little a decent. Okay, and that's good. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, here there's nothing much but just flux. So let's just clean it for the heck of it. Okay, set that aside. Now let's go for this cap. And this cap is loose. I hope it's good. It looks good. 
and you can see that it's just cold solder joint there. All right, <clears throat> so we'll do the same thing. Add some solder. Just, I probably could have just pulled that straight out. Then we're gonna dance it out. I'm gonna walk it out like the Rapa Nui walk the moais. All right, the cap looks okay. Let's see. Let's train out the legs a little bit. Move this guy out of the way. So this is where it's going to go. The orientation, I believe, uh, negative in. So this line here, this represents the negative side of the cap. So it should go like this. came through and that makes sense that's the ground plane okay and we're just gonna sort of tack a little bit on there okay well that's a lot of it I'll push on it make sure it's seated properly Okay, and that is a lot better than the other cap. I mean, it's not in great shape, it's all scratched up, but inside, I think it should be okay. So now let's pop it in and see if we get some decent voltages. Let's see what sort of voltages we get now. The cocoa is plugged in. Wow, that's what the transformer is it? Okay. Let's turn it on, and we should see, ooh, 11.48, 11.5, that's better, minus 12, minus 12, and we should get 4.97, that's an improvement, 11.5, and negative 12. I think this is a good, good, good test. Now, touch test, the field test is telling me that this PA is getting hot. Hotter than what I'm used to, but I mean, not super hot. All right, let's plug it in and see what happens. Now for the moment of truth. All right. Ba, 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 ba. Wow, I can't believe this. It was just a cap. Fantastic. These are the types of fixes I like. It wasn't that challenging, but you know, I had to dig into it a little bit. Uh, yeah, an input cap that had exploded. So, cocoa caps are usually in good shape, but clear example of how this one was not. Let's just take a look at it again. That is bad. I plugged in the Coco SDC, and I just want to see if I can play Time Bandit, because um, that way I can test the audio and I can test, although I know the audio works, I think. Well, test the audio and test the joystick. Okay. No, oh, yeah. Where am I? Right 
I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> 